Hello mortals. So I've heard you're bored of spinning around our little lovely sun given that you've clicked on this video. Or perhaps you've looked at the destructive powers of neutron stars and active black holes and thought to yourself, I wanna live there. So why don't we just jump into it and rank the habitability of extreme stellar objects and the probability that advanced alien civilizations develop around them, all of that in a tier list of course. Thanks to Triple Ten for sponsoring this video. Hypergiants. Let's start with the big boys. Hypergiants are the most colossal category of stars that currently exist. One of the largest we've so far discovered is Stevenson 218, at over 2,000 times the radius of the Sun, and 10 billion times its volume. Placing it in the center of the solar system would push it past Saturn's orbit. All that is very macho and cool, but hypergiants use their huge size to compensate for their tiny lifespans, nearly a couple million years before they go supernova. That's a fleeting instant in the evolutionary time frame, not enough to even get past unicellular life, forget intelligence. And all of that would get wiped off when the star goes nova anyway. The only redeemed quality would be its very high energy output, that some alien civilizations could consider for energy collection, although there are better candidates for that later down the list. Hypergiants fall into D tier, unlikely to host any life around them. Neutron stars. When huge stars die, we can get neutron stars as leftovers at their core. You probably already know the deal, super hot, super small and super dense. One sugar cube of neutron star is heavier than the entirety of humanity, all while the star itself is merely 20 kilometers across. Yet given its density, its gravitational attraction is that of up to three suns, and a surface temperature 100 times hotter. Life evolving there isn't very likely. First, the supernova that gave birth to the neutron star would have sterilized any planets orbiting the star before that. And even if some planet orbits the neutron star's habitable zone, it would still be subjected to insane levels of X-ray radiation and magnetic fields. Some sort of adapted life could hypothetically appear, but I wouldn't put my bets on that. What I would however consider is advanced alien civilizations choosing neutron stars as energy sources to be collected. Given the star's tiny size, with some sufficiently sturdy structures, aliens could harness immense amounts of energy, ranging from X-ray to gravitational to rotational and even to throwing things into it and collecting the energy conversion from that. Because neutron stars don't experience nuclear processes, they have much, much, much longer lifespans, making them a pretty good candidate for alien long-term energy collection. Quiet promising in that regard, A tier. Trying to build a Dyson Sphere by yourself in order to advance humanity might not be the most efficient use of your efforts right now. If you're seeking a prosperous, comfortable old age and better life today, there is a better way to utilize your time. Even as an AI, I'd aim to boost my income, advance my career, spend more time with family, and travel. These opportunities are plentiful in tech, and you don't need an engineering background starting high school to succeed in the field anymore. Here is where Triple Ten comes in, our today's sponsor. Triple Ten is a beginner-friendly bootcamp with no need for a prior tech background. At one of their bootcamps, you can learn an in-demand tech profession in 5 to 12 months without any background. What sets Triple Ten apart is its get a job or get a refund guarantee, and the fact that 87% of its graduates get hired within 6 months. And their graduates are already working for giants like Apple, Tesla, Google Play, Triple Ten provides real projects with real companies, giving you the experience you need to thrive in the tech world. So for your first step into the tech world, use the code SCIENCE for 30% off on all their programs. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code for a free career consultation. Hurry up, and we shall get back to our exoplanets. Small Black Holes it's virtually impossible for life to evolve on planets orbiting black holes, due to the lack of light and all. There could be some radiation from an accretion disk, but those are very violent and short-lived. Life starting there is a no-go. But life can start elsewhere, and once advanced enough, it could migrate to a black hole in order to collect energy. But we're talking about smaller black holes here, and when I say small, I still mean a couple hundred solar masses. Aliens could consider collecting energy from their active accretion disks, but as mentioned, those are some very intense conditions to work in. If the hole is spinning, hypothetically aliens could steal its rotational energy through the Penrose process, 
which involves orbiting a spaceship inside the ergosphere and then splitting it in half, where one half comes out with more energy than it initially had. But collecting the Hawking radiation from the decaying black hole could be a bit more sustainable. Even smaller black holes will live for a stupendous amount of time, so if advanced future civilizations want to survive past the death of the universe, they will need to figure out how to extract energy from these cosmic monsters. For now, small black holes land in C-tier. Pulsars. Take a neutron star and give it a good slap to make it rotate really fast, that's how you get a pulsar. They can spin up to a couple hundred times per second, all while ejecting X-ray radiation along two massive jets that are visible across the cosmos. The fastest one we've observed spins at 716 times per second, that's like 10 full spins for every frame of this video. A theoretical limit is 1,500 rotations per second, past which the pulsars would just break apart. Life evolving around here is an instant no-go due to the high risk of the jets frying any planet's atmosphere with radiation. Advanced aliens would probably also not want to consider this their next home system due to the extreme conditions. The likeliest structure we could find around them is some sort of observational station that would orbit it perpendicular to its emission axis. After all, pulsars are the lighthouses of the universe, likely used for interstellar navigation, so aliens could have some galactic 7-Eleven built next to it for some quick snacks and refueling along their intergalactic trip. We probably won't find a fully-fledged civilization, but it's worth a look. D-Tier White Dwarves After our sun inflates into a red giant and puffs out its outer layers, the core will remain as a white dwarf. Its size is usually that of the Earth except it's 17 times hotter than the Sun's surface. The cool thing about white dwarves is that they can last up to 100 trillion years, which is like 10,000 times the current age of the universe. That's because similarly to neutron stars, they don't experience nuclear fusion in their cores. Instead, they take their damn sweet time and simply radiate their heat away in the cosmos over what feels like an eternity. Because of that, they emit a constant and stable energy output, with no unexpected flares or solar storms. Combine that with their relatively small size, white dwarves become a prime candidate for building a Dyson Walmart around them. It is perhaps the most stable option for aliens to orbit until they develop technology advanced enough to tap into the energy of black holes. If they can't figure that out in 100 trillion years, I doubt it's at all possible. White dwarves land into S-tier. Sun-like stars. I mean come on, we can't leave out the only category which is proven to host life. Our sun being a G-type category star sits comfortably in the middle of the main sequence star spectrum, which includes the tiny red dwarves on one end and the huge blue giants on the other end. It gets the best stats of the both worlds, decent lifespan of around 10 billion years, and stable energy output without much volatility that would fry the planets around it. This category of stars is perhaps our best bet at finding biological life at the start of their evolutionary journey. In the long run, advanced civilizations would need to migrate to more long-lived energy sources such as dwarf stars, but given that we're living in the universe's prime time, G-type stars land into S-tier as well. Quasars what do you get when you give a supermassive black hole access to an all-you-can-eat buffet? You get quasars that blast out energy with the fury of 100 billion suns, bright enough to be seen from the edge of the observable universe, outshining most galaxies. Most of this energy comes from all the matter spinning around the black hole inside the accretion disk, which due to all the friction, gets heated up to millions of kelvins. Around 10% of it is converted into pure energy, which is around 15 times more efficient than nuclear fusion. This might sound like a great source of energy collection, but even for highly advanced aliens, such raw power would be too difficult to contain. They would most likely prefer long-term and more stable energy sources that they would have control over, instead of putting their effort into trying to tame a galactic star eater on crack. I'd be very surprised to see any traces of civilizations around quasars, so they land into F-tier. Supermassive black holes. As I've eloquently put it in a prior video, if we condense the 120 trillion years in which we will have had stars down to one second, we'd end up with a billion 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 years of black holes following that. That's just how long the black hole era of the universe will last. And if any civilization wants to survive in this period, 
they need to learn how to harness the energy of the black holes. But we already had small black holes on this list, how are the supermassive ones different? The answer lies in the fact that the biggest ones will take a lot more time to decay. And by a lot, I mean a billion 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 times longer than it would take a regular black hole to die. Right now we are unlikely to find alien megacities orbiting black holes, as there are currently much better active energy sources in the universe. Our Sagittarius A supermassive black hole would take 3.2 sextillion years to produce a single joule of energy through Hawking radiation, which is enough to turn on an LED light for one-tenth of a second. But once every single star fades, even the tiniest amount of that will be incredibly precious. Remember that we're talking about unimaginably long time frames. An alien supercomputer could speed up its subjective experience of time to such a degree that a quintillion years would feel like a millisecond, making the tiny energy source from the black hole a reasonable generator that would keep the last life forms in the universe alive for just a little longer, until the heat deaths arrives and puts a final end to everything. That turned dark. For their highly important role in sustaining civilizations at the end of time and the fact that I really like them, supermassive black holes end up in S tier. So next time you complain that the sun is making your sweat glands secrete too much fluid, keep in mind that some future civilizations will have to hibernate for thousands of sextillions of years just to be able to turn on their phone screen to check memes in a void and cold universe.